Today we're going to check out and learn how to use the Suncor Super Cricket TF30. It's a transistor, FET, and diode tester. Let's take a look at all the accessories that come with the Super Cricket. Um, first off is the original manual. They call it a service manual. Um, and it is indeed, but it also is the operator manual. It describes the different tests and functions of this device, also the specs. It's in great shape, a little dirty on the cover, not bad. Um, I do not I have not been able to find a date on any of this material, so I'm not sure what year this device is. I assume probably early 70s. Um, the manual does have the description of all the tests and the circuitries involved, a uh, complete parts list. Troubleshooting charts. Uh, calibration for the gain. Again, it tells you all the different tests. Um, it looks like they threw in an extra sheet um, and an addendum to the original manual, so that's included. There's also um, this piece of information regarding the uh, Sencor touch test probe. Um, that is not included with this device, or it didn't come with it anyways. Um, Basically what that is is it's a probe that allows you to test the transistor from the foil side by basically attaching the uh, grabbers to this handle that has like three sharp pins and you drive the pins into each of the different legs of the transistor in circuit and therefore you're able to test it and you would use that pretty much if you could not grab any visible legs of the transistor with the grabbers. So it's not required to perform tests. It might make it a little handy. It's certainly something that could be made, um, I think, with some super glue and duct tape and maybe some um, pins or nails. You could easily make this type of device that, that would allow this to test in that manner. But the instructions or the, the documentation for it seem to be included with this. It also comes with the schematics and part list for this. This is original to the device as well. There's your parts list. So full fold out schematic. the legend. This device also comes with Sencor's FET and Transistor Reference Book. Now this obviously must have come with this device. They actually provide a slot in the back to put this book in. Um, so I'm assuming this information is good up until the early 70s anyways. Um, so this is great for vintage equipment that have transistors that need to be tested. It basically uh, lists all the different transistors and FETs by part numbers. It identifies the base, which reflects back to base charts in the back for all different types of transistors. Um, it then tells you whether it's a high or medium or a low powered device. Um, it tells you the polarity, the gain, um, and the leak. Also for FETs, it's pretty much the same information. A 
that's the documentation. Here are the test leads that come with it. These are original to the set. Um, corresponding colors. The cable is, is pliable, in great shape. There's no nicks or frayed ends. The grabbers have all their magnets. A lot of times these end up missing. Um, all the grabbers are in great shape. They're not bent or, or, or distorted in any way. It also comes with another grabber or another test probe. And this is for gate 2 on FETs. This as well is in great shape. The grabber is good condition. All the ends are corrosion free. They all slide in appropriately, make good contact. So here we'll take a look at what buttons and functions are available on this device. Right here is the power on. The switch here turns the speaker on or off. This will light up when it has power. Here you have your test perimeter switch. So you would select your power level when you're doing um, gain testing. And you have the FETS gate switches over here. All the way to the left is what they call the cricket test. Um, this is a chart which when I demo how this works we'll see how this chart correlates to what uh, lead identification the transistor has with this device you don't have to know the polarity or the lead identification in order to hook it up this device will identify those parameters for you <coughs> um, based on where it chirps in the circuit and I'll show you how that works over here we have a gain test button a leakage button and an IDSS FET only button and I really don't know anything about FETs and I don't even have one to test so I'm not going to go into detail about FETs um, but I will demonstrate definitely transistors and several of them and diodes down here we have the polarity switch um, here are the cricket test buttons there's six of them and this is a lock button so that when this is engaged this will keep whatever button you press locked down when you let it go all the buttons are released on the back of this TF30 we have the swivel handle A speaker volume decrease and increase. You may want to play with that because I find it annoying. You have a spot for the cord to plug around or to wrap around. Here is where the missing probe would be normally kept. So, what can a Super Cricket do for you? Basically, it allows you to test any transistor or FET in or out of circuit with no technical experience. You have automatic lead coding and biasing selection. You have fast in-circuit good, bad test and out-of-circuit parameter test. This device can test a transistor in-circuit and can determine whether it's good or bad without having to remove it. Um, they say you can also perform perimeter tests in circuit on some transistors, but it's not always reliable. Uh, you may get away with it, but if you come up with a questionable reading, then you're going to have to remove the transistor from circuit. So let's demonstrate how this works. Here's a 50 watt power transistor. It's from a 1976 Marantz. Um, 
It's a 2SB557. It is not in the reference guide, so it must be newer than the reference guide. Um, what we're going to do is hook this up to the grabbers. The order and the configuration does not matter. So you can put these grabbers on any old way. Let's see they're connected. We're going to go ahead and turn on the device. We're going to make sure that the parameter test switch is in the cricket mode. Basically the cricket mode is a diode test um, and this is going to help us determine the polarity and the lead identification. Um, so basically the polarity switch can be in either position. Um, we're going to, uh, just for the sake of it, I'm going to start an NPN and I'm going to cycle through these buttons and listen for a chirp and a good indication on the, the uh, meter. So we'll hit 1A, 2A, 3A, 1B, 2B, 3B. We didn't get any indication on the NPN polarity. So that tells me that we now need to test PNP and we're going to perform the same series of button pushes until we hear a chirp. If we don't hear a chirp at all, that basically says that the transistor is bad. So, 1A. So we got a chirp on 2A and we got a good indicator on the meter. We're going to go ahead and test the other buttons. We also have a chirp on 2B, so 2A, 2B, and nothing on 3B. So the manual states that basically that, that is a configuration you're going to find is that the upper and lower button of that same number indicates that this is a good transistor. So. We now know that we're, we're chirping on, on PMP, so that tells us that the transistor is a PMP. Now that we determine the polarity, we want to determine the lead identification. To do that, we need to perform basically a gain test, and we need to determine whether 2A or 2B has the highest gain. So to do that, we're going to lock the buttons. I'm going to push 2A and then the gain button. So we have a gain of about three and a half. Now I'm going to push 2B and hit the gain button. That I have a gain of 200. So 2, 2B is my highest gain. I'm going to turn the speaker off. So because 2B has the highest gain, we're going to use this roll chart here and we're going to find 2B. 2B. So what it's telling me is green is the base, yellow is the emitter, and red is the collector. If I look up this transistor, sure enough, the yellow is indeed the emitter, um, the green is the base, and red is the collector. So we've now determined the lead identification. We also determined the gain. So we have a gain of 200 on this. This device would be really handy for gain matching of transistors and audio circuits. To test for leakage, it's basically the same test as gain. You're using the two buttons that indicated a good transistor. So right now we have 2B in. We're just going to hit leakage. We have no leakage on 2B, and we have no leakage on 2A. So basically, this is a good transistor, and we know that the gain is 200, and we know the lead identification, we know it's a PNP. Let's do some gain matching. So I have a strip of transistors here uh, to replace in the audio stage of my Pioneer receiver. And I want to pick out a couple that are very close in gain or in HFE. So what I like to do is I just follow the color scheme of base of the unit. 
So I'm going to hook up my transistors in that same fashion. So the first leg facing me is going to be green. Then yellow in the middle leg. Red on the right side. So first thing we're going to do is figure out what this is as far as its uh, lead identification. So I'll put it in cricket mode. Right now I'm on PNP. I'm going to go through. I'm not detecting on any of those, so it must be an NPN. Oh, and there we go. The one below it should indicate as well. It does. These two shouldn't. So now we know it's an NPN. Now we need to figure out uh, which has which of these have the highest bias. So we'll go over to RF or low power. We'll hold in the top one and I'll hit gain. And my gain is about oh, 300. And if I hit the 3B and hit gain, my gain is 400. So we know 3B on the chart is our lead identification. So I bring up 3B. So that's telling me green is the emitter, yellow is the collector, red is the base. So it's good to know that. But we want to match gains. So at least now I know that my gain testing is going to be done on 3B. So I'll just lock that button in. So now we're going to switch over to the next transistor. Hook the leads up in the same manner, same color scheme. Just pop them over one, do a gain check on it. This one's 400 as well. And I will probably be writing them right on this uh, cardboard. We'll check a few more. Check the gain. That's just about 425, we'll say. Check another one. Check the gain. Ooh, that's even higher. Probably about 430. We'll do one more. That's pushing about 425 itself. So that's how we could go through this whole strip and gain match everything. For testing diodes, the manual says to set the polarity to NPN. We're going to set the parameter test button to RF low power. We're going to connect the red lead to the anode and the yellow lead to the cathode then says to press down 1A and press leakage and the device should show near full current. Then we push 3B and leakage and it should not show barely anything which it doesn't. And that's how we test the diode. So I hope this video helped demonstrate how to use one of these crickets, super crickets. Um, overall, I think we went through most of the functions for testing a transistor. Unfortunately, I do not have a, a, a FET to test. Um, I would have liked to have tried that. Um, I would say overall, this is a very nice unit in very good condition. Um, as you can see, pretty mint. Well, thanks for watching.